Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you can see, I'm running my camp, my Vietnam camp, Vietnam. We've got Veterans Day next week, folks. And, you know, hey, in all due respect, we're going to be recognizing veterans. And uh, that's, those, are, those are very important events within our lives. And at the same time, we want to promote the fact that uh, uh, if there are veterans out there that haven't actually checked out their benefits and this, that, and the other, uh, you need to do that. And you've got families of vets, you know, hey, contact these folks and, and get them get them on board. And so as a result of that, we're going to talk just briefly. Uh, I've got a couple of guests here with me today that, uh, that are vets themselves, veterans themselves. Uh, we're going to chat with them a little bit. And then we're going to also uh, get Bruce Hall, the local chap, uh, uh, captain uh, of, uh, actually the no local commander, if you will, of the uh, Portman chapter of the VFW, Veteran of Foreign Wars. And so he's going to get on the phone and he's going to ch chat a little bit about it. There's an event, big event here in Portland on Tuesday. There's going to be a, a parade and, and this, that, and the other. And, and we'd like for you to get out there and, you know, and recognize the veterans and, and you know, tell them, hey, thanks for serving. You know, anything of that, if you see one, it's very important. So let's go on with the show. Then I'd say we're going to do, we're going to do about 15 minutes or so. And then after we get through doing that, uh, we're going to take a short break. And we're going to do a little post-election stuff that we're going to do, which I think is a very important piece. Because I did the election last Sunday, so we're going to do post-election. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to get that done. So, okay, with that, there's the show. I've got I've got two I've got two vets here with me today. Uh, they're both um, uh, with NAV Vets, uh, National Association of Black Vets, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, okay, and I've got I've got the commander. I got the commander and, and, and Lieutenant Colonel Linnell Brown. I've known, I've known Mr. Brown for a long time. And, uh, and also I've got Thomas Brown. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting. So and, and then at the same time, I think, I think Mr. Brown, uh, Thomas Brown, was a Marine Corps, right? Correct. And so, and then actually, I was in the Marine Corps too. Yep, that's so, why we protected so, him. <laughs> so we need we needed two we need two two court guys just to deal with this colonel sitting up here in the middle. Of yeah, him. he's he's a, he's a former colonel. Um, I don't say ex colonel. He's a former colonel, but he's still wearing a, he's still, still wearing that leaf. He's still wearing that leaf, right? Oh yeah. Right. Okay, good, good. Well, 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 welcome guys. Thank you. Appreciate that good very to be much. Here. Okay, good. Like I said, uh, just well, just briefly, if you guys can spend a little time talking about NAB vets and uh, and and benefits for vets and whatever, just throw it out there. Man. Okay. I'd just like to start. Uh, a little background on yourself. I'm sorry, Colonel. I apologize for that. You know, I've been doing this stuff for so long. I've been knowing you so long. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> give, I'm, give I'm from bit. Portland, Oregon, born and raised here. Uh, you know, Grant High School graduate. You know, best high school in the state. So, With the exception of ours, we were better. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's why you guys are Marines. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but but uh, I went on to University of Oregon and... Uh, oh. I took ROTC when I was at University of Oregon and, and entered, uh, via, entered the Army as a lieutenant colonel, as a ooh, second lieutenant, second excuse lieutenant, me. Right, yeah. But then after a year after I graduated, I ended up in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. and, and I served most of my time, all of my time in Vietnam with the Marines. Really? Although well, I was in the Army, what, what, what I was up in I-Corps. I-Corps? Yeah, I was up in yeah. I-Corps with the 5th uh, the, uh, and the 7th uh, uh, Marines. Really? Yeah. What was the MOS yeah. on that? Engineer. Engineer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Engineer. Okay. We, we use it to use for Thomas. Not getting that. Good. Oh yeah. Thanks for serving for the <laughs> court. <laughs> oh no problem. No okay. problem. Good. But uh, just it, after that, uh, I just uh, once I retired after 24 years, I retired, and uh, when I came back to Portland, uh, I had a, a short stroke, a little minor stroke there, mm -hmm. and, and ended up in the hospital, and then. Uh, I ended up in the VA hospital as well, but uh, I didn't know much about getting my benefits at the time. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of people that, that had to help me uh, get my benefits. And uh, I tried on my own, but the, the system was very difficult to, to get through due to the bureaucracy of it. And I thought I was a smart guy being, you know, in the Army and being in the Pentagon before I retired. Mm -hmm. So uh, found out that uh, I needed help. And then I just realized that if I needed help with my background, that uh, the guy that came out of the Army that didn't have my background, he's really in trouble. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And so you just really need someone to help guide you through the system. And, and that's really uh, why I started the uh, National Association for Black Veterans, 
It's to, to go out and help the underserved, the uh, veterans, uh, get their benefits. Uh, the organization started back in 1969 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, there were seven black veterans back there that were having trouble getting their benefits. And they banded together, and that's how they were able to uh, get the political support and stuff that they needed to get their benefits. And so the organization just blossomed uh, from there. And uh, I opened this one up here in 2006 and uh, recruited my first recruit was a Marine, oh, well, Thomas well, Brown I here. I to, right? I mean, that, that so, means, obviously. But uh, he was already working with veterans, helping them get in their benefits, and so it was easy for me to, to recruit him. And uh, I, uh, well, right now we have an office downtown Portland, uh, located on 100 Southwest Main Street. We're in the same building where the regional office for the VA is located. Mm -hmm. So if you come down to look for benefits at the VA office, uh, you'll be able to, to locate us as well. Uh, our phone number, if you want to get a hold of us directly to make an appointment, is 503-412-4159. And you can call that uh, any day. We're normally in office hours or from about 10 to 4, uh, Monday through Friday. So. And just my understanding, I, I met you there in your office. You got a lovely office there, also too. And also, you you entertain any vets wanting to come in and oh and yeah, we, we, their claims, we right? help we help yes. all vets regardless right, right, of color. Right, right, right. You right. know, and, and and I'm glad to say that that we have vets of a lot of different colors, mm -hmm. male and female. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, great, yeah. great. Yeah. And I guess that other point too is that and you know being being a vet myself also too, there there are certain things about. Um, uh, about an African American vet, you know what I mean? That that tends to you, by, by having this organization, mm -hmm. you can identify with that because they, the idea is you got to get them to open up. Well, everybody I think wants up. to see someone that looks like right. them when they right. when they go for for various services. Right. One right. thing about African American vets is that they don't come in right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to see a lot of them from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. You should have been seeing them 30 years, yeah, 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, but see, we had, we had this thing about, well, pride and, and yes. honor, and we figured going to deal with the VA would be to be mm -hmm. begging or asking for something. Mm -hmm. So a lot of veterans didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to get them in because we tell them, hey, you've earned these benefits. They're not, they're not giving you anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to be given to you. Mm -hmm. They're going to go by the law and the rules, and you'll get what, what you've earned. Has the, has the present administration impacted the, uh, the the guys coming in and wanting to get their benefits and have their benefits gotten a little bit easier to, to get through? Or where are we on that? Well, there's been a lot of a lot of focus uh, on veterans, especially with this current administration, and uh, uh, we've just recently received a, a new secretary of the uh, Veterans Affairs, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been uh, uh, expediting. Uh, claims for veterans that are homeless and uh, those that are in critical situations that mm -hmm. are suffering from cancer or what we call a terminal situation that mm -hmm. may have maybe less than a year or six months to live and so we try and process those claims to, to at least get them through and, and get some uh, funds into their family mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know prior to their passing. You know one of the things that, uh, that I think we would like to see it's a lot of veterans, especially when they're terminal, mm -hmm. they wait to the very last minute before they come and see us. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if they come and see us at earlier, there's things that's available to them. You know, their they, they family might be trying to pay all these medical bills. Well, if they a Vietnam vet that was exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam and, and now they have cancer, the, the VA will pay all those yeah, medical bills. Okay, right, really, really. So we, right. we like to see them come to us as soon as possible. And give us an example, because I've, I've heard some things who were visiting with, a, with a, a veteran service officer, if you will, talking about the kinds of dollars, if you will, and support and help. I mean, I've heard numbers like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I'm not trying to, you know, excite, but I want to excite them. I want to excite the okay. families and excite them to, to know that the benefits are there. Plus the fact if they had, yeah. if they had been paying for, for, for medical insurance and things of that nature, guess what? They get this, well, throw, throw it out there. One of the things, uh, we get a lot of veterans that come to us that have been with, with other organizations mm -hmm. and they haven't gotten any kind of relief. So they hear about us and they come and see us. I have a veteran who uh, two weeks ago, I, I, I've been, I worked on this guy's claim for like two years. Mm -hmm. So 
two weeks ago, they, they granted him his disability. Mm -hmm. So I went on the computer to find out what they were giving him, and I called him. You know, uh, I said, have you, 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 have you checked your checking account yet? Yes. He said, no, why? I said, well, uh, the VA granted your claim. I said, why don't you look in your checking account, check see what they put in there, and then give me a call right back. I wasn't going to tell him the mouth. Right, right, right. You know? <laughs> so he went into his account, and he called back. He says, $31,900 and some dollars. 31000 yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. I said, then you're going to have another little small retroactive check coming also of $433. So uh, I was at his house this past, uh, I think, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Friday, me and my wife went over there. And we had lunch and stuff, and, and he's happy. His wife is happy. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. took a long time, but, mm -hmm. but once we start a claim, we're going to follow that claim through. Mm -hmm. They might give a vet part of their disability, mm -hmm. but we're going to always go back and try to get more. Mm -hmm. Our, my goal is to get everybody that I can up to 100% disability, mm -hmm. and that's decent money. Mm -hmm. We had a vet that we, this, this guy was living on $200, $230 a month. That's what he was living off of. Wow. We got him uh, classified as unemployable because he's in too bad a shape to work. Mm -hmm. So now his monthly benefit is like $2,900 a month. He can live off that. Yes, right. Right, 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 and it adds to life too. Oh yeah! I mean, it just it, gives, it just adds to life big time. You know, all of a sudden you don't you don't have to worry about being homeless, yep. just being on the streets and this that, yep. and the other. You can pay your bills. Yep. Pay your bills. The phone got, quit ringing. And then that other piece <laughs> is that if you if you're married, you know, a lot of times these, yeah. these are your older folks and they're struggling. If you were trying to put food on the table and whatever, mm -hmm. is my understanding part of that part of the benefits would be that uh, the, 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 the 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 program that will pay her right. Pay, pay the wife. Some well, they, they'll give they'll give him an additional benefit if he's if, right, if they're benefit, married. If they're married, right? But they'll also pay. Uh, the wife can qualify for Champ VA, which is a medical plan. Mm -hmm. So under Champ VA, they can go and see doctors. Uh, all their prescriptions and stuff are be free, and you know prescriptions are costly. Oh, Victor, Victor, <laughs> yeah, very much so. So, so much they, they'll pay for uh, if a veteran has a certain percentage of disability, they will pay for the veteran schooling. They will pay for his wife schooling. They'll pay for his kids schooling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that that adds up, and that helps a lot. It adds quite a bit, and that yeah. means a lot too. And like I said, the enthusiasm, you know, what I mean, it adds a little bit to your life. I mean, there's nothing like like being able to pay that bill and being able to eat decently. I had a guy who oh, I I got the claim for. I saw him about five or six months after that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even recognize him. Mm -hmm. He had cleaned oh. up and dressed yeah. up, mm -hmm. and so then about. Ten minutes after I saw him, his wife come up and start talking to him. And so I said, how's your husband doing? She said, fine. I said, where is he at? She said, he's, he's standing right there. And I looked. I said, I just talked to him. I didn't even recognize <laughs> mm -hmm, him. Because mm -hmm. he had changed his appearance. Mm -hmm. He had cleaned up. He was feeling better about himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, you got mm -hmm. 50 cents in your pocket, you get happy. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's why, you know, in fact, in all due respect, that's why we're doing the show. And, yeah. and hopefully we can have you guys come back on. Yeah, if you're yeah. going to spend a little bit more time and, and bring, bring one of those good stories with you. Bring, bring one, of the, one of the vets with, that have benefited, mm -hmm, kind of like mm -hmm. the before and after type yeah, situation. For sure, for sure. And then we can just go and really get into, uh, like, uh, what one needs to do and uh, getting material so that you can do the job right, so to right, speak, right. whatever your location right. and the like, and that's why we want to make sure you did this. And then and the other thing is the fact that making sure that people recognize the fact that they, they needed those benefits. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? And, and yeah. they need to know that. People, the public needs to know that because in all due respect, had we not done our job, we wouldn't have yeah. this country. For sure. Because there's been some sure. very interesting situations in this country oh, yeah. through the years that we've been there. You got me? Okay. Anything else you want to say, buddy? Well, just that, uh, just to remind you, the, uh, the parade on Tuesday, November 11th, they uh, normally have a parade every November 11th in the Hollywood District, and it starts about 10 o'clock. And uh, the National Association for Black Veterans will be a part of that parade. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing any anyone uh, coming out <coughs> to uh, uh, enjoy the parade, like we do the Rose Parade uh, right. every year. And also on that same day, there are many... Uh, uh, many restaurants that are mm -hmm. providing free food, a free uh, free dinners for veterans. Mm -hmm. Just those like uh, Applebee's and Olive Garden, Chili's, and Denny's, they all will be providing uh, free for meals day. for that day. For that day, mm -hmm. uh, on Tuesday. On Tuesday for, for veterans. What, wear, wear a paraphernalia or show your ID? No, just have to have your ID. Have and have then ID. sometimes they're so busy, they just feed everybody. Yeah, feed everybody. There. Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good deal. Yeah. Hey, we, I think I understand we may have Bruce Hall, the, the local commander of the veteran, Veterans of Foreign War, the VFW, on the line. Do we have him on the line? Is Bruce there? Bruce, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing, Bruce? 
I'm doing great. Good, good, good. I take it you, you want to talk a little bit about the parade, and that um, I understand you're going to be also uh, carrying the poppy seeds. I got my poppies on. I got my poppies on. That's that's what you do when you contribute, right? You got me. Right. Right. Okay. And mo and most of those and most of those um, veteran service officers are basically provided by VFW, right. veterans of foreign wars. You know what I mean? So it's okay. So talk a little bit about uh, about what you're going to be doing on Tuesday, Bruce. Well, actually, I'm on the parade committee this year, and uh, I was at the committee meeting the other night. We got they got they had 64 entries already, so wow, they might add a few more. So it should be a pretty good parade, and uh, I'm going to have a couple people who walk the parade route with uh, buddy poppies and donation cans, and then at the end of the parade, uh, uh, there's going to be a some tents set up for different services that people can look at for veterans type items uh, right there by the Ross Hollywood uh, funeral home. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the parade starts at 9.45. It goes from 40th and Sandy on up to 48th and Sandy and then it ends there and then at 11 o'clock they have a little flag raising and a flyover right there in front of the Ross Hollywood funeral right. home. And uh, so it should be a good day. And then at, at, actually at 12 down at the uh, Hollywood Theater, they're going to have a, a USO uh, style musical mm. at the uh, Hollywood Theater. And there's going to be uh, three lunches for the first 300 people, right. uh, just little sack lunches. But then they have this little program there. It's free mm. to all veterans and their families. So. Right. Uh, it should be a good day. Uh, we're hoping that the weather is halfway decent. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but uh, just come on out and uh, <clears throat> let's uh, honor those who have served. Bruce, as my understanding, you're going to also be asking for a little support uh, for the chapter. Being that I happen to be a member of that chapter, I know you're going to probably give me one of those cans, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> So that's I, we, I, I, I hope it uh, goes well. We, I have, uh, I, I think I have 3,500 poppies that yeah. we have that we can These are ones I'm wearing. Yep. The idea is for people to wear them, and that shows that they're supporting veterans. Uh, donations are good. I mean, that helps. It goes into a relief fund to help veterans that are, have different needs. Okay. 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 Well, Bruce, thank you very, very much. I'll see you tomorrow, sir, at about nine, well, nine fifteen. Well, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> That's what I say. I, 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 I get my mind again. I'm gonna talk to these guys about my issues. <laughs> Thanks again, Bruce. Okay. Okay, buddy. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> again, making that point about the fact that uh, it's gonna be quite a festive day, but the whole idea is to get folks to recognize who vets are. That vets are all about. That's what this you know, is all about. And it's it's a fun little parade. Yes. We have a good time. We should go there. Yeah. You know, because uh, some people drive. I drive because I have no shape to walk, and other people walk. Okay. And. Uh, we pass yeah. out candy to the kids along yeah, the route yeah, and stuff, yeah. you know. Can they can their wives walk with them? Oh or, yeah. You yeah. Walk, if you want to wear an old uniform, one of your old uniforms. If you can wear your ribbons, wear your old uniform. If you can get into a uniform. Yeah, that's, right, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can get yeah, in yeah, there, yeah, you can yeah. wear it. Yeah, because I got I got I got some vests that's gonna be coming on this second this second half of the show. Uh, one of which I I, I I don't know they were fly boys. They were flying all over the place. All right. All right. We're gonna talk about them for days. You know, one of the good things about our organization. Uh, after, after when they formed the organization, uh, we start, you know, getting members. The average vet, especially if they're suffering with PTSD or something like that, mm -hmm. they'll sit at home and they'll go, you know, woe is me. You know, I'm the only one going through this. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're all by themselves right. and nobody else right. is having that problem. Right. Right. But through becoming a member of our organization, you're mixing with other vets. Exactly. And we get together, we have a great time. Yes, oh yes, <laughs> I mean, yes. we act crazy a lot, but yes. we do have a good time. Yes, yes. And, and we realize that, hey, we're not alone in this. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there that's just like me. Right, right, and those right. are the people that we want to reach. We want to mm -hmm. reach them and bring them in so, mm -hmm. so they don't feel like they're alone. Mm -hmm. you know, they feel like, hey, there's a group of people that, that I can identify with. Right. And, you know, maybe things look a little better. And that's, a, that's a very important piece. In fact, that's when my wife allows me to put my Marine Corps flag on the bulkhead mm -hmm. at the restaurant over at Norma's mm -hmm. Kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And guys come in.
And then periodically, at least twice a month, we do SOS. Okay. Uh, oh, you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, stuff on the sink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to let us know what but day you but do I that. We're still on mine. I, I don't have that. I just don't have that you flour have water. Beef. I don't have that cheap beef. I got to have some meat. And she makes a Creole SOS. Oh. It makes it good. So I'll get together with you guys. Yeah, let us know what and day. Let's see if we can do something in lieu of, you know, with the with the organization. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, SOS, right uh, down the aisle. Okay. Billy will be we'll there. Like <laughs> good, good, good. Well, hey, look, uh, join the festivities Tuesday, Tuesday again, um, 10 o'clock um, up at, uh, let's see, uh, on 40th, Hollywood District. Holly, Hollywood, Hollywood District, District. Port, in Portland, South 40th East. and Sandy. Yeah, 40th and Sandy. Okay? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9 o'clock. 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 9 You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, hope you, like, like I said, enjoy the Veterans Day, and please you recognize that. Get out in the parade is great. You can take the, like I said, you can take the wives, the kids. Anybody can walk down the street if they want to, and if you're a little disabled or whatever, you can get your car, register your car, and you can drive in the parade. And hopefully it will be a nice day and no rain or whatever, and get out there. It might be a little chilly that day, but, but please get out and recognize your vets. If you're not in the Portland metropolitan area, you know, at least recognize vets all over the place. And as I indicated before, you can go to Denny's, you can go to Applebee's. I think he mentioned Applebee's and, and other any of the areas. They've given free foods out there. That's all you do is you show your ID card and whatever. But most important, get out there and get your benefits. It's very, very important. Uh, visit the VFW. Call any VFW veteran for foreign wars anywhere. Or call the VA, and they'll give you a number and a location that you can go in and, and uh, see if you've got some benefits that you, you deserve, that you are in deserving of. Okay, with that. Now we're gonna what we're gonna do now we're gonna shift to the, uh, the, the this is the election though see did we have an election we haven't had elections yet I think because we still haven't gotten the polls I haven't seen the polls so so stop <laughs> gloating but we're we're in Oregon <laughs> we're in Oregon we, we did we did the show last week remember guys we did the show last week and we made certain predictions and the like and um, it seems as though uh, you guys uh, let's see some of the predictions. You, Anyway, my guest right here, Bob Wages. You know Bob. You've seen Bob here before. 
you see John Sweeney. We got John. He, he's new on the on the. He was out. He was out there looking at us this last night. And then we had Cal Henry, and Cal is the National Association. New women in Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. And so we want to talk about the elections. We, uh, we got all Democrats here today, with the exception of one. Which I, I'm a Lincoln Republican, but uh, the fact that we're going to do the D's today, got me. And then next week we're going to do the R's, and then what we're going to do, we're going to do kind of a little debate deal. We're going to bring everybody together and have everybody together and talk about where do we go from here. That's, that's, that's a very important piece. But I'd like to really, this particular show, we're going to just kind of get a little update in terms of reflect, uh, reflect back in terms of what the election is all about, what do you feel about it, and, and go from there. Is that fair? Okay. Cal, when we start with you, we open it up. What do you think? Let's start with the let's start with the um, with, with the national election right off the bat. I mean, look all of a sudden looked like the Republicans just swept everything in in the Congress aspect of it. And uh, but in Oregon, we got nothing over here. Well, it's it's true that the National Republican Party did do do well, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, when you began to look at why some of that took place, they tried to make the election a national election and blame. President Obama for everything, but people don't want to look at, and the Republican Party doesn't want to look at how they started off saying they're going to do all they can to defeat this president from day one, and then they got the media to draw into this stuff that they, that went on, and then you have to also recognize the fact that Democrats did not use the success they had had against some of the greatest odds that this president has ever faced to, to make some substantial gains for the American people. Uh, why was that so, Chef? Yeah? Why, why didn't that happen? <coughs> well, I think the, the, uh, the Republican Party uh, mantra was to do that aspect, and they were able to get the corporate media to go along with them. I think you, if you if you began to look at how the media played a lot of this stuff up, then you can begin to understand why people felt the way they felt. See, I can go back and look at it historically uh, from the day one when this country became, uh, when, when the U.S. became a country with the Constitution and all the other stuff, and began to see how things moved down the way. You can see how it's easy for people to look at President Obama and then blame him for everything, mm -hmm. even when he did good stuff and he's not getting credit for it. And he's doing some good stuff now that he won't get credit but for. But President it. Bush did. They did the same no, thing. No, not, not, not to President the degree. Bush. No, not to the degree that you find that happens during okay. this president. Okay. See, see, the uh, the essence of the country is, is embedded in the president of the United States, mm -hmm. and still there are a lot of people, a lot, a lot of white males in this country, who don't like the idea that there's a black uh, individual in the White House. Mm -hmm. Now we have to fake come up to that, but I I think we have to go and and grow from the standpoint of looking at this. And sometimes when you are inculcated with notions about what's going on, it's easy for people to follow along those lines. I know people say, well, you're moving back years, they had nothing to do with it. But a lot of things that are going on now started last, uh, the beginning of the country and beginning everywhere you turn around. If we don't look at governmental sanctioned discrimination that has taken place since the inception of this country, from the time people say you own a three-fifth of a person down to now, you, then you won't begin to see and understand why that generally the, the party structure only allow people to be nominated and elected, but it, all the people want to be s the same. Okay. And, and when you find somebody say, can't tell you that they voted for the president or didn't vote for the president, that tell you something else. Mm -hmm. And I think the American people need to understand that. And black Americans need to understand that. Okay. These political... Uh, 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 terms and political definitions. Okay. Uh, now, now, as, as you mm -hmm. walk, move around, you said, I don't want to be... You're smiling, you're smiling, now no, you're no. watching. <laughs> no, but... but, but no, I understand. I but understand we, have to have, we yeah. have to have the American people understand what is really going yeah, on. Right, right. Because, see, I put my life on the line for this country. You and in the Air Force, right? In the Air Force. Well, all, your, sorry, all yeah. of your military I don't, and I, I don't apologize for being in the military, but I, I want to share this with folks. Okay. And I don't want to take up all the program. Okay, hold up. Yeah, for sure. Let's hold up. Some of this. Okay. He, he's giving his spin on the intro piece. John, what do you think about the whole, from a national perspective, the, the race? Well, it's, it's a lot of it that uh, a lot of people didn't show up to vote. You know, even in Oregon, the fact that the vote by mail that they promised it would increase the, uh, the participation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't pan out because there wasn't anything hot. And, you know, it's, it's amazing over the, the years when they've 
had these campaigns and what what worked and what didn't work. You know, like on ballot measure 92, they, they figured the amount of money you spent was about $20 a vote. See? 92 was? The uh, GMO. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, uh, <clears throat> they had uh, uh, one uh, guy was running for re-election. Re you're talking about the state now. I'm talking about the yeah. national. Give me some national That was the stuff. state. But in, in, in the national, see, the thing is, this uh, they've been working against the... Uh, the uh, uh, Obamacare, and one of the things is that uh, he said if you like your doctor, you can keep them, and that turned out not to be true. And so a lot of those things had come out to not be true, and people were a little upset. You know, and of course, some people are a little amazed. They says, "My gosh, the politicians lied to us." You know, <laughs> that's how they make their living. You know, <laughs> most of them. And so that is the thing: is that the. Uh, uh, they, they haven't just, it's just they haven't turned out because that's, you know, they, they're so lackadaisical, Leo. They don't think it's important. Mm -hmm. And I registered to vote three days after I turned 21 because I was voting age. And I, I voted in every election since then. I made all the generals, all the, the primaries, and I believe I got all the specials. Okay. And so I could, and I say voting is important. And it's okay. just so important because that one vote can make make a difference. Very much so. People got attention. Okay, okay, Bob, your perspective here. Uh, policy of President Obama was basically the issue for this election, right. like they normally do most presidents, but depending upon who's running. Right? Mm -hmm. Policy, Bob, well, what do you think? One of the things that uh, the American voters have a, have a short memory. You know, one of the things that they do is they ask the question, "What have you done for me lately?" Not what, not I'm sorry, not lately, but now, and. The last three presidents, uh, here's a history lesson for the, for the country. The last three presidents have gone through midterm chaos. Uh, during uh, Clinton, uh, it was uh, the Republicans came in into Congress. During uh, Bush, the Democrats came into Congress in their second term. Uh, so President Obama is just... Is, do, is experiencing what everybody has during the midterm elections. One, you have a low turnout. But two, the Democrats had basically a no turnout, i.e., people were dis, was disenchanted, and young people, we found out, is really disenchanted. They didn't show up in groves like they have in the past because the message was so negative until, you know, why, why should I go vote? You know, I mean, these old people are not going to change. That's what, that's what my, the young people that I deal with said. We got to get some young people in Congress. And I said, but if they don't know anything, or if they haven't participated in the process and they go in, what do you expect to do rather than repeat what's going on? Mm -hmm. I said, because someone's going to teach them something and they're going to accept it. And so... We, the people, have got to take back, not the country, but Congress. We have to begin to put people in Congress that's going to do the people's bidding and not their bidding. Mm -hmm. And so what happened to President, I remember at the last show I said something, and I hope people understand what I meant now, by a house divided will fall. The Democrats were divided. They did not want to... Uh, Associated with pre with the president, they they accepted what uh, they didn't know how to fight what with the negative that was being uh, uh, instilled in the people from the other side, and so they didn't do anything. So you become a no a do nothing Congress on your side. Why it, you're running? Why am I going to vote for you? So they they didn't vote at all. So what do you think this is going to have? I mean, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. We just go around and have, what impact you think this will have on the upcoming president? Because that's really this. That's really where we want. Realistically, we we're, we're in the presidential race right now. It shouldn't have any impact except for whatever happens during the next two years. Uh, by that I mean this election will be forgot. Uh, you know, people, the uh, the newspapers and everyone will try and spin it in certain ways later on, uh, tw uh, 18 months from now. Well, in January, I should say, starting in June is when the next election really starts. So, 
they'll begin to spin this in some kind of way. But the people that will be paying attention will be looking at what is Congress and what is the president doing now? Mm -hmm. Because this is a me generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, and when I say generation, I'm talking about all of us. We're all into that me idea. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not doing anything for me. And so the, this time around, the Republicans had a great opportunity to, to talk about Obamacare. I have yet to see, understand how someone where something is working for you, someone is working for you, they are doing wrong. Okay. John, real well, quick, we're going to get right into the state. Really. Short memory, what, what he brought up, and, and it's been said many times over the years, he says they, they rely on the memory of the public being about six weeks long. Mm -hmm. And if the press doesn't remind them of certain things, then it just slides on by because our education system doesn't, uh, get people to appreciate history, see? So that is one of the problems, is the fact that that short memory span, see? And on the way over here, I was listening to uh, Rick Adelman, who's a, a bonds man, you know, for, for bonds, you know, stocks and bonds, mostly stocks. And he had writ written a uh, book, and he says, in his study since 1948, and there's, there's eight combinations between the president and the, and the Senate and the, and the uh, House of Representatives, he says, one, the combination is is the one party has the, the the Congress and one party has the White House. The extremists lose out because it's not going to go anywhere. So things are going to be, uh, a lot of extreme stuff isn't going to happen. The other thing he's saying, he says, historically in the stocks and bonds, they've been making about 20% on their money. So people are going to do pretty good money-wise according to this uh, money guru. I mean, I hope that's true. So. Okay. No, yeah. I, I, okay. I agree with what Bob said and also what John has said in many, many aspects of, of, of the thing. But the key thing, uh, looking towards 2016, is that people are going to look at what they are being taught. And, you know, our, our education system is not going to help well, has not helped them very much and probably won't be helping them as very much in the next few years. But whatever the media come out with, it's going to be a great influence on the thinking that people will have in the future. I certainly believe that, uh, that what transpired these last two years will affect the 2016 race mm -hmm. much more than people think it will. Mm -hmm. When you find that people who have been part of this administration are willing to go out and put books, published books, that somewhat diminish what they've been able to accomplish in terms of, uh, of, of them functioning in, in the government, I think it's going to have a great influence on the Democrat Party, much more than the Democrats might think it would be. The Republicans are going to try to ward up uh, uh, their wrongdoing such that it doesn't show very well. But I, 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 when I look at the, the big picture, I see, uh, I see trouble ahead. Oh yes, and, and and see, I see that people thinking that that they didn't have to come and uh, and support what was happening. I remember even during the first uh, four years during that mid mid, uh, mid section, I was down in Louisiana and and Texas and uh, and Mississippi, and 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 the people were just ragging the president as if he was the one causing all these folks to lose and, and he was the one doing in all these aspects without looking at their own representatives and senators. I said, when that occurs, uh, we have to do a better job of, in, of, of helping people understand what is really going on. And uh, I, I know they only seem to be on, on, on people who have not been participating in the process as much as it should be. Right. But that, Okay. The, our owners should also be on making the people who have been in, been participating understand how they have put us out the process. And I know people don't want to talk about this historical perspective in many aspects, but we got to see it if we're going to make a big difference in the future. Okay, but it was brought on the table. It's still an issue. Yeah, it is. It's still an issue. Okay, let's bring it down to Oregon because I mean, you know, this is where we are. This is where we live, if you will. Uh, this is our home aspect of it. And, and it's been said that uh, for some strange reason we've getting down to the point where most people would say, well, I live here. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people are saying now, it looks like I just stay here. 
<laughs> you know, there's a difference. Yeah. There's a difference. Now we got the gubernatorial race, and I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw this on the table. Uh, we saw what the deal was. You know, we had uh, a situation where uh, Governor Kitzhopper, our present present pre uh, governor, uh, had all kinds of issues. What issues uh, did he have, Bruce? What, what kind of issues? The yeah. CRC, Columbia River Crossing issue, uh, two hundred million dollars that was spent. We never got a bridge. Uh, we had the situation with uh, the, his first lady. Uh, putting contracts and doing things under the table aspect of it and I mean just on and on and on and the Oregonian the media brought that out and then at the end of the day uh, they endorsed him uh, over Dennis Richardson uh, right. what, what's the deal there what, what why do we go that way I'm gonna start with you Cal what do you think what's up what's well, up with that I, I, on the gubernatorial well, race see uh, what you call uh, <laughs> mistakes may not be mistakes to a lot of people and what but he, had you done those things, what do you think would have happened uh, to you? Well, well, here again, the thing that you don't want to exercise, want to look at, is my complexion. Oh, oh see, okay. see, okay. see that, so not, not, it would have been not, different. Not, the things would have been different. No, no, not only that, I would probably been been committed to doing the right things all along. See, oh. I've been okay. working. I worked in government for uh, in the state of Oregon for twenty years, and I worked in the Secretary of State's office right. for a long time. That, yes. yeah, but my point to you is that. People see what is happening. They, they understand the difference between uh, Governor Kitts Harvard and uh, Representative uh, uh, Richardson. Richardson. Yeah, Richard, yeah. They understood the difference between those two and what was going on with regard to some of the issues in the state. I, I know you may look at from the standpoint uh, that they were willing to go for this Democrat versus this Republican. No, I was thinking about the issues. I'm no, just no, thinking no, about no, the no, issues. But, but they, you can't get away from the political aspect of it. See, okay, so see you can you do it. Give me the No, 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 no. But but the point of it, you got to reach out. See, uh, you know, I, I've tried to get legislation passed in the, in 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 in, uh, in the state legislature, and I've dealt with both of these individuals in doing some of them. Mm. And but the and and the point of it is that uh, we have to look at what we're trying to do as a people in the state of Oregon. We try Oregon needs to change. And it's going to take people being raising these issues a, a lot different than they've been in the past. And that's all I said this morning. But should he be looking at, should, should the, the governor, in all due respect, I mean, it should have been some, some sort of term limits. This, is, this will be his fourth term. But, but, Don't you think we need a fresh, a fresh... Well, well, but, uh, Bruce, he, he, he's following the law. Oregon law says that you can only run for governor two terms, but you must have a, a, a break, a break in, between. in between to go for third and the fourth term. A break in the brain. A break. Oh, a break. I'm a sorry. Break. I, I got the wrong name. Yeah, a break. <laughs> because he, 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 well, he's following the law. He's not not, not uh, 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 disavowing the law like you want to think that he may be. Well, you but know, it, it wasn't. He didn't get a majority. He got, he got a majority, but it was almost about 50 50. People are still very upset. And a lot of folks. But it's voted fifty, him. Bruce. Let's not do Good that. On. It wasn't. Well, no, let's 50 go there. Let's go there. It, okay, it wasn't fifty-fifty. We well, got a majority. Otherwise, 51%. he wouldn't have won. Well, you got fifty-one percent. Okay, but here's the thing: the people decided. You didn't decide. I didn't decide. The people decided. That's right. Okay. And so, the people might uh, might know something. Other, you know, and to think about that in a downturn of Democrats, since you want to bring it to party that did not show up to vote, he was re-elected. So that, tells, that should tell you something, that most people didn't care about his fiance. Did I call her the first lady or his wife, his fiance, the person that he fell in love with, he didn't go out and research her background. But what about those charges? Do you think that... that that's, on, that's on her. That's not on him. No, but she That's on her. She got to, she's got to stand in front of everybody about those charges or if there ever become any charges. See, we keep putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, but those contracts People that she have doing, said something. He, he signed off on those contracts. But there's nothing that's been shown that she did anything wrong. Oh, my God. You better read the Willamette Week. I, <laughs> well, that's not my Bible. Okay, okay. Now, I guess you know, I'm just throwing this on the table yeah. aspect of it. But, you know, it's, it's been said that um, had, had uh, Representative Richardson had it one more month, he would have beat him. Well, well, everybody can. Uh, if I, I ain't going to go there. I ain't going to even. And then secondly, <laughs> as Mike saying, I talked to some people that said, "Well, gee whiz, I'm talking about well, but, Democrats." that said, "Well, gee whiz, gee whiz, I, I mean, I just, I just voted for him just automatically uh, the first day I got that letter in the mail. 
But then after I heard about all this other stuff, I said, gee, I wouldn't have voted for the guy. That came out I mean, before what about you got your ballot. So what? somebody's not paying attention. No, a lot of people don't read the paper. You know that. No. They don't read the Argonian. They don't read the newspaper. No, because they, they get 15 they, second they, sound bites. Uh, was that? Was the, that? The, that? The, we got, we're going the, good. We're going good. No, now no, we're getting there. We're getting there. Kel, you, the, the, what are you going to say about that, Cal? The question is. Would he have been beaten if he get one more month? If Richardson had one more month, would he have beaten? No, Bruce, you're missing the point of the process. The process, the, the November was the end of the process. And you want to go back and say you needed to go through December and January. You, you, you got to begin to look at the process. I, one of the things I said to people more than anything is that if you don't understand politics and process, you're going to fail, Bruce. Yeah, yeah but sometimes not, maybe we need change. I mean, what about what, those what, people that wanted to change their mind, but they'd already voted? Why they not got outvoted. No, but why not give them an statement. opportunity to say, okay, fine, send them two ballots. Okay, fine, you uh, you can change your mind if you want to if you, within the same time. So so you still got a period to vote. One shot, one you shot. Get ready to make me one say, shot. You get ready to make me say typical Republican response. What? I just want to do what's right Typical Republican response. I mean, the fact we lost, so this changed the rule. But Bob, in I'm, the I'm, gonna throw, I'm gonna throw this out on the table. Don't you think now that we're gonna be doing a lame duck? He's you you want to do it like the English do. The deal is you come close to an agreement, then the deal is you move the goalpost. Yeah, well, that's their <laughs> their way of doing things. That's the Republican way. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, right up front, we got a lame duck. We're gonna have a lame duck uh, governor for the next four years. He's not lame duck. What do you mean? How is he going to be a lame The media duck? is going to be talking about this I, stuff. The, the media doesn't about run it, this about state. The first, yes, they do. The first lady. I mean, they should People are going to start reading about this you, stuff. You see what I mean? We have no bridge now. We're going to have no bridge. I mean, we're not going to have a bridge. Bruce. Bruce we're not going to do anything. Bruce. You What's, see that? What's what, going on here? You see what I've been telling you? You don't want to report the news. You want to make the make news. Make the news. Who's that? You as a media. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just, no, no, I'm no, just no, trying no. to get, get the discussion. Let's talk I'm representing the, some of the people in Oregon who, who've come to me and said, Bruce, uh, I'm glad you're there. And then these are some of my concerns. Would you mind sharing that with your guests today? Yeah. This is like sympathetic vi vibrations. You have mm -hmm. the, the big press wants to make the news. Okay. And you're coming along and you want to make the news. Too. Oh, well, well, I'm just, I'm just, hey, I'm well, just deciding talk, with the, with on the, the Columbia River crossing. Bruce. Yes, yes. 200 million bucks. Okay. We talked about that. Yes. Mark Kraft, you know him. Yes. You know, okay, you know Earl the Pearl. You, you know want, Earl the Pearl. You want you want to blame Oregon's uh, uh no, I didn't uh, do that. You want to blame the people on this side of the river for that uh debacle. And the truth oh, yeah, of the matter so. was this was a this ball was carried by the other side of the That's river. That's right. What, this what, ball what? was carried by Washington State. So let's let's understand. We put money into the pot. Because it was going to supposed to support all both of us, but Washington State is the ones that carried that ball, and so they are the ones that have to get the act together. They didn't allow us to carry it. I went to the meetings. But who ripped off you the know, money? I, that I can't tell you. Who, they paid. They no, paid two hundred million. Who ripped off the money? Well, well, this, this number keeps going up and up and up. I think the deal okay. is on the CRC. The deal is they're wanting to jam. Uh, uh, light rail down Washington's. No, uh, that's not true. Well, as I understand it, they. Well, that's, they that's did, because they did, they did you, not want evidently light you, rail. You, 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 you guys are not Democrats. True. You're supposed to agree to something. No, I, I you served on the board of directors of the tribe. Are you a Democrat? And, I, and with light rail, I know what they weren't trying to cram it down anybody's throat. What happened was the government, the federal government said, we'll give you 600. Uh, whatever I can't remember, it was six hundred thousand, six hundred mil, uh, so many million to add light rail to the bridge to improve on the bridge. That's what happened. The people said they didn't want light rail. That was out. Well, that's that money don't become part of the pot. So nobody was trying to force anyone to take light rail. The government, who was giving up the majority of the money, your tax dollars coming back to you said, here's what we will do so that you will get put transportation. Well, why did uh, Governor Kitzhop, and then all of a sudden, after all this, this hoop up, up, then all of a sudden he tried to do it on his own? Well, not even conferring because with Washington. He understood. Say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build this bridge on my own, and we're going to take some of Washington's land, and we're just going just gonna to go on and build this well, bridge. That's not true. What about that piece? He didn't say that. Yes, he did it, not that say happened. that. That happened. He did not say that. What did that. he say? He said... Oregon needs to look at building this bridge. That's another $20 so million dollars worth of that's what he consulting said. fees. Yeah. Oregon needs to look at it because it helps us. You try going down the I-5 corridor. Oh, we need When a you get to the bridge. Oh, we need a bridge? Yeah. Then why, then why don't somebody say, 
Why don't we look at how to build a bridge rather than constantly laying blame on somebody and never moving anywhere in any direction? Okay, let's go. That's on. all let's my. Go, let's go with another. Let's, let's I get guess another. so. Let's, let's get another. <laughs> what, what about what, what about this driver this driver card situation with the well, what, what, for illegals? Well, what do you think about that? Now, Governor Kitsap you approved know how that. I voted now, on you know that. the governor the governor approved that. You know he he signed off on that. He wanted that to happen. Who sent it to him? Was that who sent it to him? I don't know. Kelly, you know who sent that to him? Legislature. The legislature. Thank you. The, Who makes the law? The Democrats. Who, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the legislature. <laughs> no, they're the majority. Wait a minute now. Let's get it straight here. You got you got the Senate and you got the House. I mean, right. come on now. Cal, yeah, no. let, let's get Cal in this conversation. Yeah. Cal, you, you seem to be a very sensible man. You know what's going on. Now, Governor Kitsap has signed off on this deal and it and was defeated soundly. Sure. I voted by both against it. Democrat, Democrats and Republicans, I right? I voted against it. Why did, you, why did you vote against it? Because if you, my attitude is simple. Until, until you, be, uh, because you, they give you a, a driver's car, doesn't give you all the rights to be here. And therefore, you can still, that means you can borrow your neighbor's car and drive no, in. We're not talking about neighbor. Listen, listen what about me. illegal? Have you used the word illegal yet? Well, I, I, uh, I well, say well, un undocumented. Undocumented? Illegal. Okay. Illegal. You know I mean? Let's make sure well, we put that right in there. Okay. I, I, someone told me, said, Bob, stop saying illegal. <laughs> you stop know. saying illegal. Yeah. Well, what, and say, what, say undocumented. And so I'm well, going to. What does I'm that going, mean? I don't that know. That means that, means. that a person is in the United States that's not documented to, to have traveled from wherever they came from, what country they came from, to this country. Okay, and if they don't leave, what do we call, what do you call them then? Well, that's, that's, there's a law that says that they're supposed to be deported. You've heard that you've been sit, sitting on the side just listening to the conversation. Cal, would you mind sharing with the public here what, what do you think <laughs> about this issue? Because it looks like Bob and I are going to go on and on. Yeah, that's know? right. And I'm just representing the people. I'm just representing the people. I'm just representing the people. That's all I am. I'm just here sharing the Bruce, Bruce, you're a Republican. Well, I, I don't. You're trying I don't, to give the Republican view. No, but on no, one I, hand, I, I'm just on representing one, Oregon, the no, Oregon. But, but one of the things that you don't want to deal with as much, and, and, and I said uh, the people out there, is that uh, the illegal hiring of people. Okay. Uh, see, see, a lot of this started because people who wanted people to come in here to do the work that they had done. And in they had the, a program. Uh, but all the programs were not legal programs. That, but, but see, they came in here, and, 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 and much of that started from that whole ele element. As I told you the last time and before, when I grew up in Texas, I only knew two kinds of people. And those are political terms now. You're either white or you're black. And other people, uh, the shade made a big difference. Mm -hmm. now, I knew a lot of people from Mexico that, that depended on the hue. Some went to be white and some went to be black. But later when a lot of folks started coming in here to deal with the, the work that was made available to stop black Americans from doing very much in, this, in, this, in, in, these, in those states, then it becomes later when blacks start growing with their voices mm -hmm. uh, during the 60s and 70s, it began to raise other kinds of issues. Now, these are things that people don't want to deal with, but I see that as a, as a rudiment of a lot of these things. One of the things I've always said, the easy way to do some things is to enforce the law. And when you don't enforce That's the it. law, you begin to leave yourself open. But our laws should have been enforced against those farmers and others who are willing to hire people who are not here uh, uh, um, uh, uh, at, at, with, the, with the blessing of the government. Uh, it, and, and created other kinds of problems. But you know, Until it, it, right now, people say they, uh, the uh, using your your term, the undocumented people have a right to a right to be here. Undocumented. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, no, uh, you call them illegal. I'm just yeah, talking. Illegal. I'm talking about illegal. Yeah, illegal. I'm just. I'm just illegal. I, I don't. I, you call I, them illegal. I, so, I, I, so you I, say they have a right am, to be I here. I am not that. Uh, you know, I'm not that sophisticated in the English language. You know what I mean? So Politically illegal correct. is illegal to me. I mean, I don't know. Uh, John, let's get John in here. John, what? What? What are you? You just sitting up it's there? It's illegal. See, and the deal oh, is they oh. like to use undocumented because it takes more space and you can cover the page okay. quicker by using. So I got a Democrat. He's a Democrat now. He said illegal. That's all right. Well, I, I said illegal oh, until you said it? Uh, my my uh, my son and uh, all of them told me said stop doing that, Dad. Uh -oh. Is the politically correct is uh, undocumented. Politically correct. And so, but but here's the real thing. Well, we have a workers program in this country yeah. where people come over. If you think I'm lying, go to the West Side, 
uh, into Washington County and go to any of those uh, uh, computer uh, manufacturers, chips and whatever, and see who works there. I know for a fact, because I've done some things over there where they have come to functions and most of them I can't understand the language they're speaking. And I would say 80% of them. Are you, so, are you and I'm not just, so, no, no, so no, everybody no. want to blame farm workers. That's right. But it's a lot of other people here as well, you know, and that's the thing that we have to understand. We're not saying push everybody out. We're saying that if you're going to come in, there's a come process. In, there's come, there's in a process. come in, leave Come in by the front door. Let, let, on, that, on that same note, let, let, let's, let's throw out another piece on this piece. The, the idea that uh, a lot of these folks who are illegal are doing work that Americans don't want to do. No. But then, but then on the other true. hand, That's and, and then true. and then we got the deal. Well, then we got the deal about the, the whole idea with this car deal. And all due respect, it, it was alleged that uh, most of these folks were were illegal. And uh, they were going to do the work, and then people were worried about the drink. But the bottom line is that look at all of the blacks that are incarcerated. Those folks, that, those are jobs that they, they could be working on. Good, wasn't that right? Isn't that right? Well, you mean take someone that, is, that has been incarcerated and put them out on the field? No, the bottom line is that no, no. Yes, why not? Ch chain game? Why not? Again? Why not? Oh, man. Give, give, yeah, give. We don't have enough time, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will. <laughs> but, 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 Bruce. I, I, you, you know where I'm going. You, you, you am I raising a pretty good issue? You, we got about ready? we got about another minute. I'm gonna yeah. let you, I'm gonna let you end the whole deal up. Yeah, give you, me give you, me some minutes. You raise the issue, and perhaps you ought to have some program on yeah. Yeah, we'll on what we are doing to help Black Americans understand yeah. uh, the 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 political uh, politics and process in terms of getting things done. Yeah, yeah. See, a lot of times we don't want to talk about that. That's right. You right. know about about these issues. See, uh, people want to say most of the people are incorporated and. They can't vote once after they've been incorporated for a right. while. But at the same time, what are we doing to work with them in the community and prevent them from being incorporated? And those issues have to be done by people that look like them as well. Mm -hmm. See, what we want to do is make sure that the white people do all that stuff out there and black mm -hmm. people do nothing. Right. But we want to blame the white people for it all. But, you know, yeah. someone said that, as Liz said, that uh, you know, that the Republicans don't want to relate to the issues of, of blacks and, and try to get them into the mainstream and this and the other. But, you know, I'm here to say that we got an election going on right now. They do want to want to get involved. They want to get involved. And, and hopefully we can work with the D's and, and, and really get down to the business of getting these folks employed. Well, well, is that, is that I, fair? I, 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 saw, fair I, I, I saw that. I saw okay, that. I sure hope it happened in the future, but it didn't happen in the past. In the future, that's going to be a good one. We, we are going to work together. We are going to work together. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much. Uh, this is it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. I'll see you again. The election is on. We'll be on next week. Come on back. We'll hear, some, we'll hear from the Republicans. And I'll be just as adamant as Can I come? Very much so. You, you come to the show after. Oh, okay. You won't let me on with it. Take care, folks. Have a good one. <laughs>